Wait a minute, Game Wolf. How is this video so much longer than the last one? Well, the level design is schizophrenic. That's what it is. No, it's because I'm doing actual real levels. Oh my god. The actual meat and potatoes of the canes. Honestly, there are going to be a lot more levels like this one in the other episodes. So, yeah. Also, the one level, which is like a big maze that I technically do twice. Here it is. So lots of guns through you. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it is not really getting lost, it just takes me a while to walk around the place. One, you should know, is that there's a secret exit, so I can go to the secret level. So that takes a little time to do. And then I need some time to actually go through the maze and get all four key cards in order to exit the level normally! So that's what we'll be doing today. And then one other ice cave, and then the final level. That's how it's gonna be! So, maze level, secret level, breather level, final level. And look at all these three packs. They're not quite six packs, but maybe someday they will be if they decide to join forces. Join forces in the sodium bicarbonate military force. Yes, the soda force. Soda force. You know what I used to call these tunnels? Twinkies? They're Twinkie tunnels, man! That's right. So, if anyone asks you what that is, tell them it's a Twinkie tunnel. Tell them I sent for you from a message from the Twinkies saying, Thank you for not letting us die even though we went bankrupt. Thank you. Huh. That one's guarding the blue key. Oh, here's something I didn't bother to check. It might be possible that it might have the letter B on it in Standard Galactic Alphabet. So the other ones are... I just thought of that now. You can go confirm for me, but again, it's just a thought. I know at first, without knowing what the alphabet was, I thought maybe it was like, you know, musical notes. Or mathematical symbols. That was my first thought of what these things could be. They're not that. Alright, so go down here, but carefully go to the side so you don't actually die. I know! It's fire on ice! Particularly strange for a particularly strange game, but it's... Not as if there isn't a bunch of custom content for this, because there is. And I'm sure you would like to know about said custom content. Well, I tell ya, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these single episode affairs. Not for the fact that they don't always all go together, which is true, but because there's a lot of single episode releases of content, so I might decide to address them. Before we go, yeah, nice four teddy bear collect. Let's actually go for the secret now. But you must be careful, because you're going to get iced and lasered and all kinds of nastiness. Oh, shit. Please don't kill me! I have so much to live for! Super Kino! That's so freaking Kino! Hey, you ever play Kino? You don't play Kino. It's a fucking lottery! <laughs> Why would that work that way? You know, you just look at a number chart, I wonder what gets spit out. So, really, I think to myself, isn't that just bingo? It's bingo with different rules, I would think, yeah. It's like bingo with traditional lottery numbers. Or something like that. I'll go double check. Anyway, I have to jump at this thing in a particular way in order to get him to freeze me over. And somehow with not getting burned. And also I have to allow the laser to hit me so I can get out and then leave. So, timing is crucial. I know it's hard to hear me over the ice maker, but we can all endure. That's what I think of of ice Pokemon that learn endure. Looking at you, Swine. There we go. I'm free. One bear for the road. There we go. Secret teleporter. Now we go to the secret cactus city, which has a shit ton of bonus points. Oh, if you happen to die here for some reason, um, go through the maze again. Get all the guns go here again. So, really, if for some reason you fuck up on the Great Maze, or this level, 
Um, there's multiple opportunities to stock up on ammo and points. Not so much ammo in the Secret City. Living in the secret, the secrets that we all have to hide from my face and your eyes. Correct. No, Kamikaze! Sorry, dude. But that was just for my own amusement. It was completely unnecessary, but I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah. So, what the hell, Game Wolf? Why are you explaining how this game works? I think the game speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess that's kind of a cop-out for a lot of stuff I talk about, but, you know... Only so much can be said of a jump-and-gun platformer, I suppose. Could be I haven't been really feeling it like Shulk has, but, yeah. Ah, uh, it's, it's, uh, low mer... Low, it's, it's, it's Mo, Larry, and Curly. It's not low K and Merly. What's that about? Merly! Hey, Merly! There are secret stooge now! Merly! Yes, Marley. That's an actual name. We'll go with Marley, okay? Ugh. This level is plenty big. I should be careful, though, if I'm doing custom combat Commander King, because, um... Commander King mods are like Mario mods, and that a lot of them are what we call way too hard. <laughs> I mean, I've done some hard stuff, but... It's not like there's some difficulty settings to check for that, like some mods have some idea of the difficulty, but Commander King's stuff can be just as hard as I'll get out since you can save after every level, so... Yeah. Commander Kaizo, he's at it again. He's at it again, boys, he never left. So I was getting over some stuff. Um, I almost had this other project finished. I thought in the meantime, while I was getting over stuff, I would do some little Commander Keen videos. Oh dear, how am I gonna get those teddy bears? But, no, I just want to tell you, I enjoy... I never actually played it before, but I started playing FTL Fast and Light, and it's great! It is exactly what I need if I need to actually waste time while I recover from literally anything. Plus, it's like the closest thing you get to a proper Star Trek game that isn't that VR thing. So that's cool. Space games that are in space are really cool. You know, a lot of early video games are all about space. Do you want to know why? Oh. I guess my hand that knocked the microphone knows why. You want to know why? <laughs> Do you? It's because there's no color to space, so it saves a lot of time and money to develop a game on that. You just have to make these little pixels for stars and spaceships. That's why there were so many fucking space games in the 80s. And we liked it because sci-fi was getting a resurgence in the 80s. You know, a lot of things that got a resurgence in the 80s kind of had a surgence in the 60s too, so... With great rhyming histories come great history responsibilities. Make sure on the right side of the rhymes, people. The right rhymes. Not the wrong ones, the right ones. The ones that you have to bust a on to. Yeah. I, I keep wondering if our reason for calling the Puzzle Ball games Bust a Move is because we were really big fans of Busta Rhymes. I don't know what the reason is, considering we still kept Bubble Bobble's Bubble Bobble, and the fact the characters show up in there should have really let me call it Puzzle Bobble, but okay. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah, it's that game where you shoot the bubbles and make match the colors, yeah. I would. I must say that. That. Like, puzzle action games that aren't quite puzzle logic y that reveal how they work might be okay for a one off, but the thing with those is that the single player stuff tends to be either, you know, you just kind of keep doing it or you go up against AI opponents. Which, I put that in the same realm as why I'm not covering fighting games. It's not really an exploration of game content, those things. I think my big exception for a puzzle game I'd like to actually put on this channel would be Lemmings. Because it's not just solving a puzzle, it is strategy and such. But some source ports of Lemmings 
take away from that. It just kind of give you full control over pausing and fast forwarding and rewinding. I'm like, well, okay, but you know that makes it a full on puzzle game, which means you know that'd be revealing too much. Not to mention the people that make that content usually reveal their solutions with the level. So yeah. There might be some merit to try to do it without using those tools, but I can't imagine they wouldn't take advantage of that. That's the other thing with a lot of puzzle communities. Um, at some point, people play a puzzle game enough, it's going to come down to actually knowing glitches in order to solve them, and I don't approve of that. I feel like that's what happens with stuff like uh, Boulder Dash slash Emerald Mine and Superplex. Plus, you know, you can get through a level in a very short time, a very long time, and you just die, and you're just like, Oh, great, gotta do it again! You know. Wish I had saved that take. Would've sucked real ass times. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no. How is he going to get over to the exit? But when we get to the exit, there's a shit ton of teddy bears. I want them. You will give them to me and add them to my collection. Eight teddy bears! That gave me two lives, just like that. Nice. Now we do the Great Maze for real! Oh shit, doggies. Get along, little shit doggies. I need more guns. We need a sign for each gun. I don't know why. Hopefully we don't do that anymore. I apparently had enough for another life already. Cool. So, death is pretty much below us now. I guess it always has been. That's where you go when you die. You become below. Soda cans. You know, I still have a scar from opening a can of something. I think it might have been a soup. And, um, basically what happened is... I, I, I guess I got in the wrong can from the factory that time. So I was opening the little, what do you call that pin thing? You know, that thing that flips over and over to open it. And, you know, I was having trouble opening it, and I was really doing a good job forcing it until the thing did finally flip, but it went right into my hand. Or, yeah. So you can imagine what that was like. It hurt, but not for very long, and that wasn't even the problem. No, the problem was that, um... You know, I'm familiar with bleeding, but, uh, that was coming out like a, a geyser. And I had to stop it immediately with something without treating it properly, so I ended up with a scar. It was just bleeding too fast. So now I have a... That's gonna mess with the fingerprints, but now it's there permanently, and I don't know what to do about it. I wish I could just fix scars. You know, if they're just superficial like that. Maybe there's, like, dermatology slash plastic surgery for that kind of thing. I'd like to know, because I want to know what my natural thumbprint's supposed to look like. I mean, I have a relatively good idea. But it's still annoying. Oh, well, what you gonna do with those platelets when they come after you? Nothing. Oh, yeah, I like how the final level is guarding the final item, which is Everclear. So, Keen took his parents' alcohol and is using it to fuel his spaceship. Totally ethanol, right? That's what I figured. I figured as much. So, what's with that? This kid knows because he's so smart that he realizes his parents are drinking. So he takes it upon himself to take the alcohol from his parents so they stop drinking and use it for a more constructive use it for something more constructive, like building a rocket ship. So, good on you, kid. You're a role model for us all. And children. And when you grow up, you can become big and buff and explain how you have the similar build to Doom Guy. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but... Technically, Commander Keen is... the grandson of BJ Blazkowicz. Because this guy's real name is Billy Blaze, which is Americanization of Blazkowicz. And he's also the grandfather of Doom Guy, who also goes to Mars. Coincidence? I think not. I, I assume that means... Yeah, so... 
Wolfenstein guy, Keen guy, Doom guy, they're all related. So yeah, Keen is his grandfather. That means BJ Blauskowitz is, let's see, great great grandfather, the Doom guy. There you go. I figured out the family tree. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Um, yeah, I think there's some. It's interesting because I I think I remember seeing the Commander Keen mobile game and then the showing a really buff Commander Keen to explain that that while well, he had like, you know, a son and a daughter for the new King mobile game. By the way, that mobile game is pretty trash. I don't even think they consulted Tom Hall on it, which. I, I think Tom Hall is kind of the soul of these quirky DOS games, when it comes to the writing anyway. Because for the most part, the writing doesn't matter, but I like what he writes anyway. This is kind of what the shit I grew up on. I also like Scott Miller, he's still a thing in Apogee, so that's nice. But yeah, if you, if you like goofy storylines to action games, I guess Tom Hall's your man. Oh! I feel the pain. The pain of a thousand key gods. What am I missing? The green one? Well, let's go freaking get it! Alright. Yep. So, yeah, I didn't need... Surprise, I didn't actually need a level map to figure out where I was going. You know why? Do you know why? Because I was gonna get there eventually. I wonder if I could play that same idea as Zelda. It'd be like, I don't need a stinking overworld map. I can just go around and do whatever I want. It doesn't even fucking matter. It'd be like, okay, whatever you say, dude. Yep. They call me Commander Keen because I'm very keen to see what I'm commanding at some point. Alright. That's cool and stuff. Can't, let's get a move on. Alright. Ugh. <sighs> Can you hear it in your soul? The aliens that want their soda. Also, wait, I thought Martians survived on Earth by chewing nitrogen gum. I thought that was the whole deal, is that they breathe nitrogen? Speaking of breathing, am I Batman breathing space right now? I just realized I was breathing on Mars and I wasn't even thinking about it. But, you know, video games. There it is! I don't get to see the green card very often. But there it is! The fabled green card! That has yet to show up. Yep. I am big on key cards as much as people detest them. I love key cards. You go to hell, key cards are the best. Although, this is. The, I'm the same guy that likes 3D collectathons, so maybe you shouldn't listen to me. With the exception if they have tutorials. I think everyone agrees that force tutorials and 3D collectathons are the absolute worst. So I'm with you there. But when they don't, and I can just go look around and do stuff, I'm okay with that. Look, it's the exit! Uh, I, I'd like someone to confirm for me if that exit is possible to get to. But I'm pretty sure the intention is that you don't. This is supposed to be a fucking ice cave level too, so I'm surprised there's... As, this is the one with much effort put into it. Something shaped like a little tiny cave. Also, this also gets all four keys, so that's nice. Uh, I could use some philosophy that's somehow standing with the lack of gravity. That's because philosophers don't believe in gravity. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what I hate about those? I can't go back up them. Shit. The dreaded downwards one-way platform. Hate the shit out of them, I guess. It's usually the other way, but not this time, dicko! That's what they call me, in certain circles. Circles we would not want to have any part of. I just realized his corpse disappeared when I went off-screen. Wow! Game facts! By the way, I call it Game FAQs, so the reason why you call it Game Facts is for some reason that makes it sound like the word FACT. Which is it necessarily? Honestly, I don't mind written walkthroughs, but it seems like if I want the greatest walkthroughs now, I have to actually watch videos. Especially when it comes to ROM hacks. I have yet to see a written walkthrough of a ROM hack. 
with the exception of, like, maybe the author themselves doing it, like, once or twice. Never happens. Never happens. Look at all that pizza! Pizza that survived space? Oh, yeah, what are all these Earth products doing on Mars? No, wait, no, no, it's the same reason the Lunar Lander's there. It's something this... Yeah, I think astronauts would forget their pizza slices on space. What do you think? The Ninja Turtles in space! Yeah, I know. Just made me think of Ion Fury where I pick up a pizza. It's like, cowbunga! I'm like, hey, Ninja Turtle reference. Oh, and also my health. Thanks! But yeah, you eat the pizza, improve your health. Same way... Same with the Coca-Cola. I was like, I think this game knows me a little too well. Just a little bit. Uh, uh. They've only got one, two, and it's a buck one. Imagine, if you will, you have a single tooth, but it's at the bottom of your mouth, and it is also a buck tooth. At the bottom, with an underbite. I dare say a dentist would hate your guts. Or maybe... <laughs> because it'd be better to just have zero teeth. Instead of maintaining his one single teeth every day, wondering if it's okay that particular day. How can I get to the exit? Where is the real exit? If I was able to get to the first exit, would I leave the level as if nothing had happened? Does the exit itself actually function, or is it a death trap? I don't know. Let's do this without dying. As I'm so off to do when there's fire traps. Yeah. It's always environmental hazards killing me. Never the enemies. U usually never. You cannot kill the Vorticon commander directly. So I'm told. Go in to the place where the guy lives. He's a leader of the pack. He hurts a bunch just because he's got a gun. Well, no he doesn't. But he's technically invincible, technically not. We'll get to that. I just know that there's yellow ice, and I'm pretty sure my kid self immediate thought was that the urine was frozen. I apologize not at all for that. But that's what I thought. I was like, why is the ice yellow? I thought to myself, oh my god. The real answer is I think maybe they're using silver and gold. But that's just putting it gently. I'm not really sure. We're just doing something for funsies. Nothing I have to actually worry about. Just something I do as tradition every time I do the final level. Since it's long and foreboding and not really all that maze-like, you just kind of do what you gotta do and get your ass out of there. There's like a castle and... There's a castle on Mars. Oh, that's how I get back easily. Alright. Yeah, I gotta be careful with leaps of faith in this fucking game. I wonder what... If someone made a soundtrack for the first three Commander King games, I'd like to know about them. I know someone has, like, reinvented the first game in the Commander King 4 engine, which, yeah, fair enough. And give it some music there, but... What about for this version? Do we have some straight-up bleeps and bloops, or what? I mean, it does seem odd that early DOS games didn't have music, given that we had... Uh, well, the Commodore 64 had music, but it had a, you had to trade off between sound and music, really. I'm just saying. At first, DOS games weren't known for the music, and Commodore 64 is bringing home all the DOS. But what about the rare NTSC Commodore? Well, I don't know. Here we go. Spend a little with my friends. Took you where it very ends. Going to escape Mars and go back home because I've been away from bed too long. I need to sleep. Kidneys to sleep. 
Even with his IQ over 300, he puts Dr. Eggman to shame. Yes, he does. Not voiced by Jim Carrey. Voiced by that Mike guy. Blue key for the blue person in you. Blue key. Going up the sideways the darkness invigorating in me. Yay, a six pack! No wonder he's the final boss. He gets to have an actual six pack. <laughs> well, I say final boss, but there's really a trilogy, so it's not really the final boss. He's more like the episode one boss, and not really a boss at that, so never you mind. I prefer DOS games when they have actual bosses, but even then, they're not always that bossy. Sea Quake. That wasn't really. Yeah, usually you shit for the head, but hey, you know! Hey, oh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I find up you? Excuse me, moi. What art thou doing? Art thou the commander who keens? Oh, whoa, saved by the pixels. It's alright because I'm saved by an old ass show. Wait, isn't there a robot down there too? Oh, no reason to go over there. I swear there was a robot down here. Oh, okay, here's the, like, sleeping quarters for the gargs, I think. They all have teddy bears. It's kind of a silly exercise if you want to involve yourself with it, but I will not. Oh! It just means there's just two ways to get up there. I, I guess the right way is reliable, but still. Come on, now. Opening door sound as the lights overlap like triangles in the night. Robots on ice! <laughs> Top of the day to you, Mr. Robot. Alright, so that guy. Now, technically, there's two ways to do this. Or actually, three ways. One way, which I've attempted many times, is just to actually try to duck under him. And by the way, a few times I have been successful with that. You know, get him to jump over me. But this is what you're supposed to do. You shoot the chain that falls on him. The other final way is... I don't... He's effectively invincible, but I think if you have enough ammo, like, more than you would ever consider having, you can destroy him that way, too. I'm not 100% on that. Just go with unloading the chain on him. I know it seems like it makes it too easy, but that is what you're supposed to do, I'm sure. Look, you can even see what the world map was supposed to look like there. That's pretty funny. Oh no, the screen is doing it again! I, I, it's all, I've always seen that do that, so I don't even think it's a DOS box thing. Question mark? Hey, what you doing over there? Oh my god! So that's a Vorticon ship. And basically, while Commander Keen was running around on Mars, it gave him time to prepare their ship so they could blow the fuck up out of Earth. So that's what we'll be doing with in Episode 2. And then, you know, then they get sh sick of Keen's shit as he goes to their home planet in Episode 3, and he finds out what's... Uh, this all, you know, he tries to settle it once for all. Keen brought a Yorp home with him. Uh... Somehow. Somehow not letting the fact that he went out at night and picked it up. So really, this has just been a... This is like a Mac and Me E.T. story. Kid brings home an alien. Pretty much. Spielberg is laughing about it. But there is no sleep for Commander Keen. Wait a minute. Is that himself talking or the narrator? Do, 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 to be continued. Dot, 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 dot. Do, do, do. Yes, the Vorticon mothership of all things. As it destroys you with the tantalus rays. Oh, good. Congratulations, you get the first play shows. Okay, cool. I like how it also marks how many parts you have. You know, in case you die without getting them all. So, yeah. That's cool. 
<laughs> just give me, you know, that would be good for like emoji awards. If someone was just like a Commander Keen channel, just use those parts as like medals. I don't know. It's like, are you the most loyal to me? Then you get a free Everclear. That's it for Commander Keen episode one. Um, shouldn't be long before I get around to Commander Keen episode two and three, and likewise four, five, and even six. Yes, even six. So, see you around. Love to see you again. <laughs>